When we last left off, it was spring 2021. Our end of year banquet was held online. Band director Corey Witt said his final goodbyes and passed the torch to our new band director, Bob Grigas. I handed over to the Saugus High School director of bands, Bob Grigas. Bob, take it away. Wow, thank you, Mr. Witt. Thank you for being a great friend for the last four years. I promise to make this the best program experience that you can possibly have. At the same time, new student leadership was announced. Incoming seniors Grace Goldstein, Zag Palop, and Benjamin Bartell had hopes of landing a spot. This had been a dream of mine since 7th or 8th grade. I, I thought, okay, this is the night I finally fulfill my dreams. Listening to leadership announcements and then... Our color guard captain is Grace Goldstein. When I found out I got the captain, I was really excited to be able to interact with all the different classes from the team and just help people. And at the very end, I remember Mr. G was the one who announced the next drum majors. And your 2021-2022 drum majors are? Mr. G announced that it was going to be me and it was going to be Zach. And I was so happy. I could not contain my joy. I screamed yes at the top of my lungs. It was fantastic. I remember like running around the house and like yelling and stuff. I don't think I'm ever going to experience something like that again just because I have all like these online friends who I'm celebrating with. It was crazy. It was crazy. There are very few moments in my life where I felt as happy. So far, that has certainly been one of the happiest moments of my life. This is Saugus Marching Centurion's Road to Washington, the limited audio series that follows the Saugus High School Band and Color Guard on a journey of resilience, perseverance, and teamwork. Summer 2021. For the first time in a long time, we entered the marching season with fresh energy and purpose. New director, new opportunities, new parents, new families. Booster Club Volunteer Coordinator Katie Hubbard. Everything's new and it feels like we're finally getting some traction towards hope for the season. After almost a year and a half of wondering when we'd get our lives back, we were finally able to meet once again on the field at band camp. We were ready, and it was going to be hard because no one had marched for two years. This is my, it's like my first performance as the head guy at Saugus. So, but it's really all about these kids here. Going into band camp, I brought all the energy I had, and I knew that it would be stressful. There was a lot of confusion going on because the people who were on Zoom for their freshman year had never done this before, so it was just the seniors trying to like calm down these chickens running around with their heads cut off. Anything that could have gone wrong went wrong. I'm in a meeting somewhere else, and I get a phone call that someone had hurt themselves. I have to go onto the field, and there they are, laying down with a towel over them, and their knee is popped out. <laughs> this is band camp. It was so hot. Everyone was falling down. The canopies were breaking, and when the wind would come in, then we have no shade. <laughs> it was really, really tough. But it wasn't just the weather and injuries that made things tougher. Stay with the line. Stay with the line. I did notice when Mr. G became band director, there was a little bit of a change. It was a more intense experience, not only because we had that latent period when we had done nothing, but also because the show we were doing is more intense, the visuals, the music. Mr. G had a meeting with the section leaders and just setting all of these ground rules. I think it was like a six hour meeting. I could tell that this season was going to be different and there was going to be a lot more pushing towards championships. I was definitely tired by the end of band camp. I'll say that. But I did have a better idea of the standards that Mr. G was going to hold us to. Personally, I had super high expectations. I was just hoping that we could take this very hardworking energy that was present during band camp and just keep milking it for the rest of the season. It all started back then, back in band camp. Mr. G had one goal for the season ahead. It had been five years since the marching centurions had made it to championships. 
and we'd never made it in the 4A division. All I wanted to do was just make it into championships. That was the goal. I was like, we could be 12th, the bottom of 12th. I'm fine with that. That's it. I just wanted to make it into championships. I wanted those students to experience band again, to experience marching and going to competitions and just being a high school student again because they hadn't had that real high school experience in a long time. That was a goal, but it was really a different sort of goal this time. In previous years, it wasn't the end-all be-all because I feel like, to, to some degree, Mr. Witt wanted his band program to be a piece of a puzzle and that broader puzzle being the entirety of one's high school experience. I was a little bit more, the kids, because you say hardcore, <laughs> strict, stern, and focused. I was super focused because there's this goal. I'm trying to get to it, and I know it's attainable, but the only way I know how to get to it is through focus. And if you learn how to focus, you can learn how to do so many other things. And so that's the one thing I wanted to teach the students a lot was to focus. Wit love to have fun. And that's the one thing that I really respected about him because he always reminded me like band is supposed to be fun. And he comes from really good schooling too. I mean, he's a great player, amazing player and a really good teacher. And his thing was like, let's have fun and let's keep it light. For me, we're getting stuff done. Because why are we here? What are we working for? And so my philosophy was to really keep everybody focused and to show them what focus could actually do. And if you can focus, it takes you to another level. It takes you to something that you've never seen before. You will see stuff that other people don't see. You'll be able to reach things other people won't reach. And through that, if you do that, you will actually have fun. It's no secret that some band members struggled with the new direction. During the times when something went awry and Mr. G got kind of mad, Zag, myself, and Mr. G, we had to talk it through. And there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that I had to deal with. These wrinkles at 17, that's how I got them. That's how I got them. When I say I'm going to do something, I'm doing it. That, I think, really tripped up a bunch of people because they, they're not used to that. They're not used to someone saying, oh, he's going to do this. Nah, he's not really going to do this. Like, no, 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 I am. When someone messed around or did something wrong and I said, I'm taking you out of the show, that wouldn't happen before. And then it did happen. They're like, whoa, wait, you're really doing that? Like, yes, I asked. I asked you nicely. The rules are set. Please do this. And I found that by doing that, they trust you more. They trust you because you're consistent and you do what you say you're going to do. So they'll work with you. If you do what you say you're going to do, you're teaching them to do the same thing. That's what I've found out. And it works. But not everyone was on board. Oh, no. No, people were not on board. People did not like it. And, you know, I'm the fourth band director in like five years. So, no, because there's no consistency. And that's the thing that's hard. And that was really tough for all these kids to get them on board. It's like, well, is this guy going to leave? Why should we listen to you? And some kids just said, I'm not going to do this anymore. And I said, that's fine. And that's okay. Because I would rather work with a band of 20 that really want to work hard. And I'll take that band wherever they want to go rather than 100. And then you've got like 25% of them that just are slumpy, <laughs> that don't want to do anything. I will not have students that don't want to be there. I'm not going to keep them if they don't want to be there. I'm not going to push them on this thing. If they want to do it, they'll do it on their own. And we can try it. But if it doesn't work out, it's not going to work out. And then I will let them know you should think about something else. Or if a kid is taking down the band, I'll just say, yeah, you should probably find another activity. There's so many other activities that you could do. But for most of us, we were committed to the team and the goal. There was just like this unbridled energy to do something. Because I think especially with the senior class, none of us had been to champs. It was either do it or don't do it at all. And with a lot of patience, determination, and understanding, we began to work together. Like a hundred person weird little band family. Eat, sleep, band. What do you know about that? There's a certain kind of people that join band. Very hardworking people, very empathetic, very caring people. They love what they do, smart, very smart. And sometimes goofballs, a lot of the time goofballs. <laughs> band kids are weird. <laughs> And for the first time in a long time, maybe ever, the band and color guard were one big unit. My coach started teaching the band members just a couple movement exercises to get the band a better overall general effect and movement score. 
it was fun having a sense of unity because before we were just kind of two separate entities. But with Rob and Shane and Mr. G trying to get us to be together, I think that really helped the band this semester, for sure. But there was a lot more friendships between band and guard, and which we hadn't really seen before. Like It made the fight for championships a lot better. It didn't take too long for us to realize that this season was special. Our show was called Nocturne, which included turning tables from Adele and the classic tune Moon River. I can never explain the rush of the opening hitting moment of Nocturne. I don't think I'll ever come close to the feeling that I got when I was conducting that. This wave of energy and notes hit you all at once. I wish I could put someone in my shoes and make them feel what I felt being the leader for that. It was crazy. Seeing how much the team had grown from band camp to that first performance in front of people, because the first performance is always so hard for everyone. It's nerve wracking. And seeing how excited they were after they performed, I knew that there was going to be a really good fight to championships. And I knew we had a chance like right there. We worked hard and fought hard to improve our show and increase our scores, spending much of October and November at competitions all over Southern California. The Heart Rampage is proud to present the Saugus High School Marching Band and Color Guard. And while we got off to a slow start with scores in the low to mid 70s, in second place, with a score of 74.31, Saugus. By early November, we hit our stride. Best show. Best show. I'm really proud of Sockers. Performance was good. Really, really good. You guys rocked my socks off. All right. You guys were amazing. As championships approached, the staff especially was kind of getting more intense. I kind of did get frustrated. I really needed a break. Definitely. Our hard work was paying off. First place with a score of 79.53, Saugus. We arrived for the final day of competitions with back-to-back -back shows in Ventura County. First, a morning performance in Oxnard. The 35th Annual Oxnard High School Field Tournament is proud to present the Saugus High School Marching Band and Color Guard. Where we earned our best score of the season. And in first place with 80.60 points, Saugus. Color Guard Director, Rob Guzman. Just know that feeling you have right now, walking out that field, how amazing it feels. If you could push that now in this heat, you're gonna be golden tonight. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But... And then we hopped on the bus to ride 20 miles east to our final show of the season in Moore Park. Under the direction of Zach Malaf and Benjamin Bartel from the city of Saugus, California, performing their show entitled Nocturne. The Moore Park High School Battle of the Bands is proud to present where we bombed, scoring four points lower than we did that morning. Oh, they did so bad at Moore Park. It was, ah, oh, it's, it just wasn't that good. It was such a bad night. We had these biggest rip during our show. We got off during one of the most crucial moments, which was like Moon River. There's no way that just happened. It didn't help that we went up for awards and we didn't score necessarily super well. We did really well at Oxnard, broke the 80 and then we go to Moore Park and it just, they were tired. It is what it is. That's life, guys. You should be very proud of yourself 
for the growth and the progress you guys have made from the beginning of Bandcamp till now. I was holding back tears the entire time. I just started crying because, you know, I wanted it so bad. I was just like, what if this is it? What if this is it? The regular season was over. Was it seriously going to end this way? Bob calls us in. We're all huddled. It's really quiet. And he just goes, You guys, I'm very proud of you. Congratulations on a wonderful season. We're going to championship. Yeah! Oh, well, we made champs! Dude, we made what? champs! Everyone just erupted into, like, this fervor, and I was like, oh my goodness, like, I had people coming over and hugging me. When Bobbin announced it, I just kind of stood there in shock for a second, and then I started crying again. I don't know how I had the water in me to keep crying. Just to see the reaction of everybody, and they're freaking out, and there's people are crying. It was like, oh, this is great. You know, this is <laughs> a great feeling. Yeah. I have never known a saga like this before. I have never known championships. We've worked so hard, and we deserve this. We've put everything into this show. I don't think anyone else deserves to be in this spot. It was so ultimately satisfying. November 20th, 2021, the band and color guard piled into two charter buses and hit the road for Riverside, California for the SES BOA Championships. Going to championships, I just stood there looking around on the field. I could see teammates off to the left, teammates off to the right. We all had our little pre-show ritual where we'd blow each other kisses, give each other hearts, hug each other. It was really fun to have that one last dance behind the props before we had to get into character and just perform the show. The 2021 SES BOA 4A Championships are proud to present Science High School Marching Band! Standing in front of the band and like being there was the craziest experience because not only was I performing, I was conducting them and I got to do my salute in front of everybody. One, two, three. And I got to count it off in front of everybody and it was just like this crazy feeling. Whether you thought it was your best one or not your best one, it doesn't matter. It was incredible. I heard some people were crying. The great job. Really, really amazing work. That's it. You made it to championship. You guys made it, and that's what matters. All these four years amounted towards the moment that I was there, standing in front at championships, accepting that award, celebrating with the band. Sixth place with a score of 82.7, 82.0, Science High School! Oh, there it is. We got sixth place. Not in a single point in my high school career besides that moment did we go to championships. To hold those plaques, to take those pictures, and, and spend time with the band, I'm glad I got to experience that. I don't think I would do it any differently, and I don't think I would change it for the world because all the hard work that we put in was so worth it, so worth it. This is to you, my family. Man, thank you guys. <laughs> to Thogus! This is a different place. I'm so glad that I get to be a part of this amazing family. Hey, Saugus, how do you feel? We feel good! Oh, we feel so good! Oh, 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 oh. I think that was one of the biggest boosts that they needed in the last five years. Because none of those kids had ever been to championships. The last time we went was 2016, and then we never got to go because of all of these different conflicts and problems. But I think what really made a big difference was the fact that we went up against somebody like Hart and West Ranch and were competing with them. Not too bad, like getting sixth place where they were demolishing us years in the past. For a long time, Saugus was always the, oh, woe is me, and we're not that good, and Valencia's better than us, Hart's better than us, West Ranch is better than us. And now it's like, no, guys, you're at that level now. You are there. Our staff is working well, the students are working well, the curriculum is working, it's working. 
And the best part of it all, people were starting to take notice. We were at the SESBOA championships. And then afterwards, I had gotten an email from somebody saying they saw our show. In that email, an invitation we never saw coming. Music Celebrations International, in participation with American Veterans Center, would like to formally invite the Saugus High School Band to be an official representative of California in the 2023 National Memorial Day Parade in Washington, D.C. When I saw that, I was like, wow. And he said, yeah, we saw you guys at championships, and we wanted to invite you because we thought you guys were really good. <laughs> hey, we're going to Washington, D.C. It's an amazing opportunity for these kids who have been through so much to get an opportunity to stand and march in our nation's capital. I think it's just an opportunity that once in a lifetime. But we can't do it without you. Just to run the band and color guard program costs about $140,000. The budget for band is thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Music, maintenance, equipment, all kinds of things like busing, it costs a lot of money to do ban, and that's why we need donations. We need participation. We need help from parents, from the community, from everybody. But what about the money from the school district? So the district gives us a roughly like 800 bucks for the year, for the year. That barely pays for music. Barely. That barely pays for one instrument, maybe. Just to give you an idea, to do the drill, which is the formations on the field, you have to pay a guy to specifically put every single player in that specific spot. So we have eight clarinets and three tubas and 20 guard. Everybody has a number and a dot. That person has to figure out where they go on their computer program. That costs like $3,000 just for that. So the 800 bucks that I'm getting from the district doesn't even pay for that, for just the drill. Without fundraising and enough money to get by, a band can't function, unfortunately. And let's talk about our trip to DC. It's an additional $150,000 for us to be able to go on this trip of a lifetime. We need your help. Support the band in any way, shape, or form. Anything they can do to help us reach this goal would be amazing. So please make sure that you share this podcast with people that you know in the Saugus community and beyond so that we can get the word out. We're going to Washington. To support the Saugus Marching Centurions through personal donations or sponsorship, please visit saugusband.com. Saugus Marching Centurions Road to Washington is a limited audio series created by Morgan MacDougall Productions. Produced by Jackie Morgan MacDougall. Edited and mixed by Jeff MacDougall. Special thanks to Peter Borja for his contributions. I'm Brady Mac, Jr. and Marching Centurion. Thanks for listening, and be sure to stay tuned for the next episode. This has been definitely a capstone year for me. It has felt that way. It was a good way to end that chapter of my life, I think. To leave a lot of these people behind is... It's unfortunate, but I feel like it's time for me to move on. I'm happy that I get to leave. I think I've had a good four years, and I think it's time.